Caddis Maximus here again. This time I'm talking about the third generation Dremel rotary t moto tools and discussing the progression of them. And I needed to correct myself. Just in the previous video, I had shown the progression of Dremel tools from the earliest to the ball bearing, early variable speed, later variable speed. And then I mentioned they went to the multi pro. Well, just like archaeology, where you find one of those fossils which shows the link from the old. Uh, evolution to what is the modern evolution, I did find this Dremel, which is the third generation, but in a very one of the very early ones, a 275, where it's still the Dremel Moto Tool. And interestingly enough, it's 1.15 amps and 28,000 RPM, where when they started labeling them as multi-pro, there's still a Type 5 1.1 amp model 275 but somehow magically they're 30,000 rpm so it's perhaps that this unit is not ball bearing but it has a real tight spindle so I suspect it is and they may have made a slight change to the motor to uh, advertise a higher rpm I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that but when I do a performance review of all the Dremels I will uh, take a few speed measurements to see how fast they are actually spinning but I did want to start off this video just showing the nice chronological order of Dremels as they've moved up through the years. Let's go ahead and get these older units out of there now that you've been able to see them all next to the third generation. We have first, second generation. Now let's talk about these third generation tools. Just a second here. I've got a tangle of wires here. So anyway, as far as third generation Dremel motor, moto tools... Uh, I did find this transition or transitionary one, so this would be one of the very first of the third generation. The third generation is important is when that's when Dremel went to the modern era. These are the ones where they accept all the standard accessories through the the coarse threaded collar. Where the earlier second generation, even though they had a threaded collar, the accessories were proprietary. The other thing about these is these won't accept accessories made for the older ones so that little uh, finger router attachment or close quarters attachment or close grip attachment doesn't fit on these Dremel tools and as we can see we move from single speeds and they introduced the variable speed these variable speeds uh, weren't so bad but they didn't have a super fine control and the switch was real light so it was pretty easy to bump so it wasn't my favorite and you tend to just run them at full speed and they've had a few issues. I've run into a few used ones where the variable speed didn't work and it was simply an on or off. Then they finally, uh, at the very end of the third generation series, came out with the Model 395 T6, where these are uh, Type 5 Model 395s here, and then Model 275s on the single speeds. And then this is the one where they put in the rubber overmolding, and this was just before they came out with the latest generation, which is like the 300i and the 3000, 4000 series. And I only have one of those, but I will talk about it. I also believe that this 395 Type 6 was one of the last of the American-made Dremel rotary tools, but this one is indeed American-made, as we can see right there, uh, made in USA. And when they went to the blue color. Another nice thing of the 395 is they did change the variable speed. So it has a bunch of little uh, detents in it. So it really stays in position much more uh, effectively. And it seems to be able to vary with a little bit more fine control because of that. And we'll give that a listen here. And I thought that was real wise that they had the detents in there couple other interesting things this very early one they don't have markings for what type of plastic it uses but as they moved up to the multi pros one tool and it generally became an industry standard I think because of the as recycling became more popular it was more important to know what kind of plastic something was made out of so this multi pro was the first one I've seen that actually has the type of plastic PA6 GF 33 so that sounds for phenylalkylene uh, if I said that right which is nylon Reinforced 33% glass fiber. I suspect this is this this one is the same thing, but it was just a little bit before they started actually marking on the tools. Also, on a side note, this is the style of Dremel that is the most commonly knocked off by other manufacturers. When they lost their patents, the manufacturers, uh, all the Chinese ones and everything else, you know, uh, I think even some domestic ones. Uh, started really just pumping out rotary tools once the patents ran out and they all kind of look similar to these specific Dremels.
This is also by far the most common style Dremel that you would find used. I mean, they probably sold millions of these tools. No joke. I've run into so many. I've probably given away four or five of these things to friends and uh, family members. They're just so hard to pass up. When you see one of these, you plug it in and it runs smoothly at a drunk store or garage sale for five bucks. Uh, there's many situations where you'd use a Dremel in a punishing you know, environment or in a punishing manner. And it's nice just to have another one. That way you can have one where it does get beat up. Maybe the bearings get worn out or it gets kind of overheated. Um, and then you have a good one for fine work that always runs smoothly that you take care of. And that's kind of the point of having multiple Dremel tools is to have a backup because they don't have a huge amount of power. As I move on to the uh, fourth generation, I will talk about other options for using Dremel accessories or 8th inch tooling and accessories when you do need more power. And those would be such things such as drywall cutout tools like roto zips and I have a DeWalt. So sometimes you just need to use a small tool but with heavy, you know, high pressure grinding or heavy cut off and you're kind of overloading the little 1.15 amp motor, you can use a drywall cutout tool. And what I mean by that is uh, most people, when they're using Dremels and they don't have enough power, they can, you know, get frustrated or they burn them up and they, and, you know, it took me a little while to realize, but there's other tools that you can use with Dremel 8th inch accessories that will give you all the power you need. One of them I'd recommend is this RotoZip Solaris, just because it's easy to remove the adapter. It's a drywall cutout tool, but you can just pull off the adapter. It has all the tools and bits, extra collets right here in the handle which makes it kind of nice. I have reviewed this tool before but this is a 3 amp 30,000 RPM 8th inch rotary tool and that's nearly triple the power of a Dremel. This will usually get it done. Of course it's a bit bigger and heavier but really as compared to this Dremel it's not much bigger at all and when I see that I've always been kind of surprised why does this have a 3 amp motor and this only a 1.5 1.15 amp motor although this does have an integrated variable speed I always kind of thought Dremels were a little underpowered and if 3 amps at 30,000 rpm is not enough power you can always go something a little bigger such as this DeWalt drywall cutout tool this is when I found a garage sale and it had a broken standoff a broken uh, a, uh, adapter that rides against the wall and it had like a toolless chain so I pulled off that whole adapter for the no tool uh, change option and it gives me a little bit more clearance on the spindle and this thing is 5 amps at 30,000 rpm and it's heavy but I'll tell you what at 5 amps it's over half a horsepower this will annihilate any 8th inch Dremel accessory you can put into it you can put your whole body weight into it and it will just the you know the little grinding wheels will explode um, but what's nice about it is if you need to get aggressive, you can use something like this and truly test the durability of a Dremel accessory. So those are a couple examples of much higher power options that you can certainly use with all the Dremel accessories. You just can't use them with the snake adapters and that kind of stuff. Anything that threads onto the front of the Dremel units. Let's go ahead and actually give these a, a bit of a run here. Plug them in so you can hear how they sound. Dremels do run pretty smoothly, and they are a little quieter just because they are smaller and a bit smaller motors. The one disadvantage that we would have with these bigger tools, of course, they're going to be a bit noisier. But let's go ahead and just run through these, and uh, you can hear how they sound. I should also mention that the third generation is when they no longer had a metal or a cast, die cast, zinc internal uh support for the motor so technically they're not quite as high a quality uh, but the advantage is, is that they don't have to be grounded anymore so these are the first generations that didn't have any type of grounding we'll start off with the very early one and these are pretty much going to sound the same there is a little bit of a difference with the 35,000 rpm this higher speed one here This one's a bit newer than this one, so it does sound a little smoother. And then we'll go with the ver the first, or the, I wouldn't say first generation of variable speed, but I will say, let me get this untangled. 
here we go. We'll take a look at this one. And we'll show the variable speed here. Pretty nice low speed. This one's really hit the sweet spot in the break-in, so it sounds like it's spinning just a bit faster. The variable speed is pretty good. It's just the switch is so light on these that it's just so easy to have it somewhere, and it just takes nothing. Just a little, just a little bump. Just just touching it when you're using the tool and you just you kind of touch it, it will adjust itself. And it has a little bit of a detent at the top speed, but not like it has a strong one when you turn it off, but. Not really much to keep it at full speed, and that's always kind of been annoying. Is you're using this, and you just br this thing is so light that you just brush it against anything, and it'll just turn itself down. And that's you know always was kind of annoying, and I always found myself just using the single speed units just because of that. Until I ran into this unit, which has a much better variable speed, much stiffer with the the detents in it, so you don't just bump it. It's much stiffer, and it's actually a good thing on this tool. Let's go ahead and plug it in. I do kind of like the blue highlights and the blue brush covers. I do like the fact that even up through all these generations, Dremel's brushes were easy to uh, access. And that reminds me, uh, somebody was commenting about hard to find brushes. The thing about carbon brushes is they're uh, standardized on sizing. So all you do is take out the brush and use a pair of calipers or something to measure the width and the height and then just order another brush that's the same thing. And I think these are just quarter inch square brushes. Actually, they may be smaller than that. Right at the end of this video, I'll actually pull out the brushes and then give you guys a measurement off of them. But let's plug in this other, this last one here. There we go. And I don't have a chuck on this, I just have a thread protector on it. As we can see, we have a wider range. We can get this thing just barely turning, which I do appreciate. This Model 395T6 was a pretty big improvement on the variable speed. And it really runs smoothly. If you're going to get one of these old ones, this one with the T6 is really one of the best. I really like the rubber over molding. It seems to have held up pretty well. Uh, and it does give you a little bit better grip. So this is really, you know, for some reason I'm not so fond of the new generation Dremels. Um, I really still think that this is one of the very best units, one of the last of the American made ones. And just for giggles, just so you can hear what a actual high power eighth inch rotary tools sound like we'll plug in this 3 amp Rosip Solaris it moves a lot of air you can see it blowing that screwdriver around obviously that's way too much power for a lot of Dremel accessories but in certain situations it's exactly what you want and it will definitely get the job done and since having that it's kind of nice because I just treat them as just additional extreme heavy duty uh, Dremel units. And then here's the DeWalt just for giggles. This one has a lot of startup torque. You do have to be careful if you're actually going to use this. You don't want to have this like if you're doing light port work or any kind of small metal work. You don't want to have this close to it while you're starting it up, obviously, because when you turn this thing on, whoop, there we go. It really wants to twist around. Anyway, that was kind of the end of this review and comparison. Let me pull out the brushes. We'll just pull them out of this unit right here, or one of the brushes, so we can get a measurement for those people. These do have an integrated spring, but you don't have to. The one thing about brushes, and I do want to mention this, is when you pull them out, the motors always turn in a direction they kind of wear, so you want to keep track of the orientation. And if you always, if you ever forget, there is a way to tell. And if I, let me zoom in quite a bit here on this brush. 
how you can tell on a brush is there's going to be a, see the bottom edge of this brush just down here you can see how it's a little darker versus the top edge so the leading edge where the motors rotating this way is going to be polished and the trailing edge where the motors falling off there's going to be a little bit of arcing and make the brush a little bit darker and that's how you can tell which direction because if you put the brush in upside down it kind of uh, makes a weird sound and takes a second for it to kind of reseed itself um, and so you want to keep track of that even though this brush has a couple of little cutouts here I don't believe they are absolutely necessary let me take a look in here there is no notches in the brush guide just for some reason Dremel has little notches cut out in the brush for no reason but the deal with brushes is they're sized universally so it doesn't matter if you can find a particular part number from the manufacturer you just search for a brush and in this case that's 1875 had to get my little stare at chart here so that's 3 16 thick by 210 which is a little odd 1364 but it's a th 3 16 and just under a quarter inch wide so 3 16 thick and just under a quarter inch wide and bra carbon brushes are really soft so you can always get a small a little bit larger of a brush and literally just a couple passes on a file and it'll grind off or you'll be able to file off quite a bit of the brush and then be able to fit it in the tool so anytime you have any issue with a carbon brush it's irrelevant you can always find brushes or find a larger one and then file it down and put it in you can also kind of upgrade where you get like a nicer brush say of a cordless Makita drill which has copper particles impregnated into it for higher conductivity and you can file one of those down and get it in there if you have trouble with the springs such as uh, some of them like this it doesn't matter you can just cut it off and use uh, any old type of spring and really high quality brushes will actually have a metal wire that travels through the spring and it is embedded into the brush and you could always put one of those in as well but I did want to point that out for the, the commenter who couldn't find brushes uh, you will be able to find brushes just go to a tool just go to a to local tool repair place and bring in one of the old brushes and they'll be able to find you a pair that will work anyway sorry for this a little bit excessively uh, wordy and uh, slightly rambling review and comparison of the third generation Dremel motor to Roto Moto tools but I did want to kind of talk about them these are the most common ones and then kind of show the available options and arrays dealing with brushes as well as uh, more powerful options if you have problems with your Dremels overheating or you're running them hard just get a more powerful eighth inch drive rotary tool this Roto Zip Solaris will do everything you could ever want using eighth inch accessories believe me and when I do my big power comparison of all of the Dremels that I've gone through I will include the Solaris and the DeWalt just to show uh, how powerful they are in relation to these Dremels anyway I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel until next time Caddis Maximus out